Hi, it's Terry Gaines. In this video, I'm going to share nine cards I created with the translucent floral bundle and the delightful floral designer series paper. The bundle can be found in Stampin' Up! September through December mini catalog. The stamp set has 13 images. You got some beautiful floral images along with some sentiments. The dies have 18 dies. The dies will cut out these images and then you have some additional dies to create a beautiful floral image. And the, this is bundled together for a 10% savings or you can purchase the two separately. The Designer Series Paper is part of the Stampin' Up's Designer Series Paper Special. It was introduced on September 6th as well as supplies last. And at the time I'm filming this video, it is still available. It is double-sided prints, um, six each, or six different double-sided prints and you get two each. One side you have beautiful floral images and then on the other side, you have a watercolor background. So this is absolutely beautiful paper. And as I mentioned, it coordinates with the translucent florals bundle in the mini catalog. And it is so pretty. And I'm going to be sharing nine cards I've created with this designer series paper and the bundle. Before I move on, I do need to talk about this particular print. This is one of my favorite prints in the packet because you can cut out these floral images and add to your card and they are so pretty. So I have cards to share with you that I've done that. And what I'm gonna do is show you some card sketches. My nine cards are created using three different card sketches. I create card sketches for different team events. And the first card sketch I'm going to share with you is card sketch 123. So for a card sketch, you have, it's inspiration. It's a starting point for your creativity. The card base can be eight and a half by, eight and a half by five and a half, scored slash folded at four and a quarter, or you can have it 11 by four and a quarter and score or fold at five and a half. So you can determine your card base. For the decorative image, it can be any size or any shape. You can add as many layers as you would like. The bows and ribbons on card sketches are optional, and you can adhere your pieces with your favorite adhesive or dimensionals. Now for this card, we have our card base or card sketch. We have our card base. We have three strips that are three and a half by five and a half, I'm sorry, three and a half by a quarter. We have a piece of cardstock that is two by three and a half. So the first card I'm gonna bring in and show you is um, representing this card sketch. We have those three strips here. Those are in cardstock. We have the bubble bath card base. The basic white is the two by three and a half, and that's where I stamp the sentiment. And this is that floral designer series paper that I cut out. I'm gonna give you some tips. I'm not one to like to cut out. I leave some white space, and then I try to put white behind the paper. It's not or behind the image. That's not true for this whole image, but especially right here I did. Because if you notice that right here, maybe you can see in the video, I cut in here. My white spacing is not equal all the way around. I did not cut this out. So I intentionally put white paper behind that. That camouflages all of that area. And until I point it out or you look really closely, it is not where your eyes go to. So this is a sample using the designer series paper, the stamp set for the sentiment, and stamps, paper, and ink. My next sample I'm gonna share with you, I brought in a punch, so, and I brought in more layers. My half inch strip is the designer series paper, and I stamped the image on the two by three and a half. I added a layer behind it and then I fussy cut out the flower. Now I'm gonna give you a tip on cutting, on stamping that flower. So um, I have the Berry Burst ink here, and I think the best thing to do is to take a spoon, and if you've got the round edge, and move your ink, because with this type of stamp, you have so many little details here. You don't want ink in the crevices, you just want it on the surface. And sometimes you get too much ink on your ink pad, but what I'm doing by this with a rounded edge, I'm just moving it. It's eventually gonna settle right back there, 
but I'm moving it long enough that I can just tap my ink on. I don't want to push hard because then my ink is going to go in the crevice. I just want to tap, tap, tap to get my ink on the surface and try to get just the detail of that beautiful stamp. Now, as I mentioned, when you push too hard, you get extra ink in there. So that's a tip. Now, this video, I'm going to be sharing tips with you. I have the cards assembled, but I'm my goal is to share all the tips I can so you can duplicate these cards. You can use the same colors I'm using or change it up and use some other colors. There's so many to pick from. So for the next sample, and I, I mentioned that it's got a punch. I used the double oval punch for the sentiment. This card sketch has no sentiment added to the card sketch, but you can add sentiments wherever you would like. As I mentioned, this is really an inspiration for your creativity. Now I changed it up for the third sample for this card sketch. I have stamps, paper, and ink. I added dies and folders to this sample. So I've added the what, what I do have in the card sketch to help you out. I have the supply list and the code number. And then I also card one, the product I used, card two and card three. So you can kind of see how I use the different products. And my goal was to use a lot of the same products so we can um, maximize our product and get lots of ideas using the different product. So I use the countryside corner dies instead of the dimensions here. I have background paper, the designer series paper for those half inch strips. I added another layer and I texturize this layer and this layer with the basics 3D folders. You get three different folders when you purchase these folders and I used two different ones on this sample. I stamped on my basic white cardstock and cut these two images out with the dies and this is with the stylish shape dies that I cut out that banner. So I have stamps, paper, and ink. I added punches to that and then I added dies to that sample. It's a fun way to just add to your projects and um, create beautiful samples or create beautiful cards. So the next card sketch I wanna share with you, the three samples is with card sketch 27. So we have the same basic guidelines for a card sketch. I have here the layer that I have in basic white is three and a quarter by four and a half. You have three pieces that are seven eighths by four and a quarter. You can add ribbon around here, that's optional, and your decorative image. So what I've done here is I've used that designer series paper again. This time I added my embellishments are with the rhinestones. I think I failed to tell you that first sample for the embellishments, I have these adhesive backed glitter sequins. And then for the second sample, I have the rhinestones. So then what I wanted to share you with this is um, I added a sentiment. I just cut the banner here. And even though I talked about how I camouflage this area on my previous sample, I did not cut in here, but I still think it turned out really nice. It's not noticeable if you don't actually point it out. And then for the ribbon, that is a combo pack that's in the annual catalog. You get these three colors in your packet and I have the code numbers right on the flyers. So this is stamps, paper, and ink. Here's a sample bringing in some designer series paper that has got a print to it. So we have the watercolor background on this one. I wanna give you a tip. This is an option when you use a designer series paper for your strips. What I like to do is cut out that section because if I cut it out and not have those little strips in there, it appears I'm looking through a window and then that is a void area here. My other tip is, is to have these sorted so you know which is on the right and the left and which one's in the center. I put this one on first, equal spacing on the two ends and that end turn it over, put this one on, then I put this one on last. So I'm going to put my adhesive on the back 
And the reason I put it on last is now I can use this edge and the other edge for getting that aligned, but then I can look for equal spacing on four sides. Otherwise, I typically end up with extra spacing on one edge. So I put the ends on first and the center on, and I cut these strips out. I'm gonna give you a little bit more detail on that on my next sample. So that's how I did this one. And then I have the punch, the double oval punch, and then I added some just rhinestones throughout the sample here. For the third sample for this, I added some the dies, and then I added the folders here. So what I did for this one is I have, I put the strips on this cardstock and then I ran it through the painted texture folder just to add some more texture to that. So I assembled all of that and ran that through. For this one flower image, what I did was I have my, um, floral piece cut out and then I have this flower. I stamped them and then cut them out. What I did was I took a paper snips and I trimmed along this bottom leaf, just trimmed along that. That way I could tuck this in like here. So that's how I created that little additional leaf that pops up like that. And then I used the stylish shape dies for the banner. So this is card sketch 127 for the three different samples. Then I have one more card sketch sample to share with you. And for this one, I'm gonna give a little more detail on cutting those strips. So for this card sketch sample, we have a half inch strip, a half inch strip, and then a one and a quarter inch strip. So here's a card that I created using the, just the designer series paper a lot of the same product, the same embellishments I just shared with you. And then I have this ribbon that is the Sweet Sorbet ribbon that's in the annual catalog for the ribbon that goes around. So what I want to share about the tip I want to share is this designer series paper. So I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer to show you how I cut that. So the height of this is five and a half. So I already have that piece cut. What I'm going to do when I cut this, and I'm gonna get a little bit better organized here. What I did was I looked at my card sketch and I'm cutting this piece first. Then I'm gonna cut out a quarter inch void, cut a half inch, cut out a quarter inch void, and then cut out the um, second half inch. So what I'm going to do is use my ruler here. Now I don't have a full um, 12 inch piece. I just grabbed a piece that I had left. So I'm at, I'm at 10 and a half. So I'm gonna go to nine and a quarter. That's gonna give me a one and a quarter inch strip. Or you can look at this side of your ruler too. You got both sides to look at. I'm going to cut that strip. So that is my larger strip there. Then I'm going to move this. I, I said a quarter inch, didn't I? I meant, um, yeah, I did do that a quarter inch. I'm going to move this a quarter inch. Cut out a void here. And now as I work with this, I'm going to just keep putting them next to each other. Now I'm going to go a half inch. So depending on the length of your designer series paper, is how you're going to determine um, where you're cutting here. Or you can always look at this other section, so other side of the ruler. So now I'm gonna cut out a quarter inch here. And even though these are the voids that I'm not gonna tape down, I'm still gonna put them there because that's gonna help me keep everything organized. And the last one is a half inch. So um, here we go. So now these pieces are not going to be adhered and I like to have that so it has that void area. That's how I cut my designer series paper. So for that sample, we have stamps, paper, and ink. And then, um, as I mentioned, is not a beautiful designer series paper. You can cut that out and design your cards. Now for this card 
sample, I used the circles to help cut out those images. And what I did was I stamped that floral image with a greenery, and then I stamped the floral images on top of that. And then I, I um, punched it out with a circle. So it's this image. I took this little floral image and I just stamped right over those. I have um, the three different colors, bubble bath, berry burst, and calypso coral. Then I stamped it on a piece of scratch paper. I stamped another flower, cut that out, and I have that attached to the top. So that's how I did this sample, stamps, paper, and ink, along with punches. And here's the third sample that I have on this flyer. And this is where I added two different colors to my greenery. I'm gonna quick show you that. And what I did was I used the Pretty Peacock and the Parakeet Party. So what I did is I stamped the image with the Parakeet Party. And so I'm gonna just, just tap, tap, tap this on to get the ink just on the surface of the image. Then I'm going to take a sponge dauber and the Pretty Peacock color. I'm going to take the sponge dauber and I'm going to add dark ink on the leaf and just in this area of the stamp. And then I'm going to add it right here. But actually, this actually gets covered up with that floral piece. But just add this color with the sponge dauber and then stamp on the paper. And then you're going to get that image that kind of looks like the designer series paper. What I did for this one is I cut that out with the dies. I took my floral image. That's just added here. Then I stamped another of the images that has a die that will cut out, did the same technique, and then I added that on top. So that's how I got that image. I added a lot of those glitter um, sequence and then some of the Perky Party trim that is in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog. So for this video, as I mentioned, I was just giving you tips. I probably went way too fast, but the beauty of the video, you can pause it, you can rewind it. If you want to duplicate these cards, you have all the details. You can also change up the colors. For these different card sketch samples, you can use different cardstock color bases. You can use different ink pad colors, and that's the beauty of creating. You can add your own twist to the product. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. And again, you can find all the PDFs to download on my blog, Create with Terry Gaines. And um, thanks for stopping by. I would love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take care and happy creating.